friends i am gunal madivanan current affairs faculty at officers academy so in this video we'll be discussing uh, test number 5 uh, which has 75 current affairs questions which uh, appeared between uh, uh, month of june and october and uh, 25 questions from map and international organization right first question is about uh, swachh bharat mission swachh bharat mission so what is this mission all about in 2015 in october our honorable prime minister he launched this mission so what is the objective of this mission so he wants to create a cleaner india by 2019 october to mark the 150th birth anniversary he chose 2019 october so within this 5 years from 14 to 19 he wants to create a cleaner india so the main objective of this mission is to create a india which is free from open defecation the first statement is partially correct but the date is wrong it is october 2019 is the target date and this mission is uh, there for both urban and rural areas in rural areas the implementing uh, ministry for this mission is ministry of drinking water and sanitation but for urban areas it is ministry of urban development so second sentence is also wrong because second sentence says that it is a nodal ministry for scheme for all across india no it is only for rural areas both the statements are wrong so here we have asked about the correct statements since both are wrong answer is d neither one nor two right second question which of the following pairs are matched correctly so here brew tribe which was in news recently so what is the reason so brew tribes are largely present in northeastern part of india so you will find the presence of brew tribe in assam tripura manipur mizoram right so in mizoram what happened in mizoram mizors are the dominant tribe brews are also present there was an ethnic conflict in 1997 so the brews in mizoram they were migrating to tripura and now recently governments have taken uh, steps for repatriating the uh, brew tribes who were uh, migrated to tripura back to mizoram that is why it came in news so here the question is about a correctly matched pair first pair is not correctly matched by eliminating one i can easily say answer is c2 and 3 second one draba tribes they are found in meghalaya region that is correct danka tribe they are found in rajasthan region so 2 and 3 is correct so answer is c 2 and 3 only so the next question is about uh, purchasing managers index so pmi so pmi like how we have index of industrial production it's a monthly index released by uh, cso which measures the performance of uh, industrial sector right likewise we have something called as purchasing managers index which measures the performance of both manufacturing as well as service sector it is released by a private financial services firm japan based and us based firm the index score above 50 represents that particular sector is expanding let us say manufacturing pmi is 57 that means manufacturing sector is performing in the current month when compared to the previous month right a pmi reading under 50 and that represents contraction in that particular sector and when there is no change see when there is in the indicator indicates 50 a score of 50 that means there is no change right so second sentence is also correct so pmi is compiled by cso that is wrong i just now i said it is compiled by a private uh, financial services firm three is wrong question is about correct statement so answer is b 1 and 2 only <coughs> next question is about uh, msp minimum support price so what is this msp see a farmer he can sell his farm produce to government as well as he can sell if he required he can sell it to private players also so at what price government procures the food grains from the farmers so the government they announce a price called as msp which is announced during the sowing season right it's announced in sowing season so that is the price the minimum guaranteed price at which the government will be procuring from the farmers and this price is recommended by cacp commission for agricultural cost and prices and that recommendation is approved by cabinet committee on economic affairs so we look into the option first option says that cabinet committee on economic affairs approves the msp that is correct msp is for market intervention during sowing season that is correct commission for agriculture and cost and prices recommends that is also correct so answer is d 1 2 and 3 next one katsa so katsa sometimes in news so what is katsa countering 
America's adversaries through sanctions act. In 2017, America passed an act which enables the American president to impose sanctions on countries which are considered to be adversaries to America. Currently, North Korea, Iran, Russia is having this Katsa sanctions. So, why it came in news, why it is bothering India? Because that Katsa Act also says that if any country is having significant uh, uh, transactions with uh, Russia, then on that country also this Katsa can be extended. India is having a significant relationship with Russia. So, Katsa sanctions can also be imposed. Technically, America can, can put Katsa on India also. So, that is why it came in news. So, here answer is A, it is an uh, act imposing sanctions brought into force by USA. Next one, which of the following statements are correct regarding uh, cholestine? So, what is this cholestine? Cholestine is an antibiotic. Cholestine is an antibiotic which is given to the animals, especially for the chickens, to kill a particular bacteria called as Klebsiella pneumonia, right? And this cholestine antibiotic is actually it is uh, enhancing the digestion process. And in turn, that is acting like a growth promoter. When there is proper digestion, the chicken grows better. And indirectly, this antibiotic is given as growth promoters. Since it is actually resulting in promotion of growth, excessive cholestine is also given, right? And when an antibiotic is given in excess, and that might lead to growth of more drug resistant bacteria. So when I take an antibiotic that is going to kill the microorganisms, let us say bacteria in my body. And there will be certain strong bacteria that cannot be killed. When I take excess antibiotics, my weak bacteria will be killed, but my strong bacteria will be left out and that will multiply and there will be more stronger bacteria. So, next time when I take an antibiotic that cannot kill those strong bacteria, so that kind of bacteria is called as antibiotic resistant bacteria or drug resistant bacteria. I say a particular bacteria as multi drug resistant bacteria when if many antibiotics is not able to kill that bacteria then I say that bacteria is multi drug resistant. So, to kill such multi drug resistant bacteria we have something called as cholestin. So, cholestin is the last resort antibiotic why it was in use and now there are some bacteria which are even showing resistance to this cholestin. So, what happens there is no antibiotic to kill those bacteria that is why it was in use it is largely the cholestine bacteria are given to chickens, it is largely used in poultry forms. So, answer is A. Right? Uh, seventh question. So, select the correctly matched pairs. So, we will see Hayabusa. Hayabusa 2, it is a spacecraft launched towards studying the Raigu asteroid to study the geology of Raigu. This Hayabusa 2 was sent and it was sent by JAXA, Japan uh, Space Agency and this mascot was sent which was this mascot was actually sent by uh, French Space Agency and German Space Agencies under this Hayabusa 2. This mascot is nothing but mobile asteroid surface scout and that is going to study this Raigu asteroid. So, first one is correctly matched. Change for the lunar mission sent by uh, China to study the far side of moon from earth we can see only the one side of moon to study the farther the other side of moon china has sent this change for and the next one is voyager so we all know that voyager means someone who travels longer distance to explore unknown places so just by knowing the literal meaning i can easily say this is about exploring the outer solar system it is sent by nasa so all the three are correctly matched so answer is d one two and three Next one is about uh, geopark networks or global geopark networks. So, what are those geopark networks? There are certain sites, certain landscapes which are having international geological significance. Those sites has to be protected, has to be conserved for several reasons for sustainable development, for protection, for education, right? And those sites are identified not by IUCN, it is by UNESCO, UNESCO. Right, not by IUCN, first statement is wrong. So, Lonar Lake in Maharashtra, St. Mary's Island in Maple Beach in coastal Karnataka have been added. No, Indian Geological Survey, they are recommending that UNESCO please add these areas to your site. Currently, there are 140 geo parks 
right from 38 countries have been uh, selected. So currently India is recommending, Geologic Survey of India is recommending this UNESCO to add these places. So both the statements are wrong, question is about correct statements. So answer is D, neither one nor two. Right. So next one is regarding global hunger index. This global hunger index it is released by IFPRI, International Food Policy Research Institute. First one is correct. So they take four important parameters. One is undernourishment, child wasting, child stunting, and child mortality. These four indicators are used to calculate this GHI. So what is child wasting? A child at a particular age is not having ideal weight. What is child stunting? A child at a particular age is not having ideal height, right? So you know about child mortality and undernourishment, right? So these four indicators are used to calculate GHI, that is correct statement. So recently India has shown improvement in all the indicators, no, definitely no. India got 103rd rank out of 119 countries, out of 119 countries, India got 103rd rank. Last year our rank was 100. With respect to wasting, with respect to wasting, we are not performing, we are actually, our performance is very poor. Almost 21 percentage of uh, uh, children in India are coming under the wasting category. South Sudan is 28 percentage. If this continues, we will be surpassing even South Sudan. That has to be checked, right? So also we have uh, Sustainable Development Goals target. Goal number three talks about uh, healthy life, clear? So we have to achieve this nutritional security aspect also. So third statement is not correct. So with respect to child wasting, we have not improved. So three is wrong, so answer is uh, B1 and 2 only. Human capital index, human capital index. So it is released by World Bank. World Bank releases something called as World Development Report. World Development Report. So recently it released 2019 World Development Report. The theme of this World Re Development Report is the changing nature of work. So in this World Development Report, it is going to release something called, it will be releasing something called as Human Capital Index. Like how UNDP releases HDI. Likewise, World Bank releases Human Capital Index. So Human Capital Index, it takes into account of the mortality in uh, among the children, mortality rate in among the adults, stunting rate and also quality education based on that, based on these parameters, the human capital index is calculated. Answer is B, World Bank. So next one is about uh, Mission Indra Dhanush, Mission Indra Dhanush. So it is an immunization program under universal immunization program that is a correct statement was launched in 2014. So what happened? This universal immunization program was not able to achieve the desired results. The coverage was not that universal. We were not able to cover large amount of people. The government launched in 2014 uh, Mission Indra Dhanush to intensify the reach, right? So first statement is actually correct. It is a vaccination program. Of course, yes, it is a vaccination program which aims to achieve full immunization coverage of 90 percentage and above by December 2022. No, no, the coverage is has been the pre to 2019 December. So December 2022 is a wrong fact. So second statement is cut wrong. It vaccinates people against all vaccine preventable diseases. No, it vaccinates people against eight, sorry, seven, seven vaccine preventable diseases, not all. Remember, Mission Indra Dhanush is something different from only Indra Dhanush. Indra Dhanush talks about banking reforms and Mission Indra Dhanush talks about vaccination, right? So it vaccinates people against seven vaccine preventable diseases. So second and third statement is wrong. So answer is A, one only. Twelfth one, the word e Cooper seen in news refers to. So what is this e Cooper? So this e Cooper is nothing but the core banking solution of RBI. So what is this e Cooper? So here, every bank, let us take Axis, let us take IOB, let us take ICICI. So every bank will be having one current account. Assume every bank is having one current account. And we all are having accounts in these banks. So we all are having accounts in these banks. Assume we all are having, these are, you know, people who are having accounts in these banks. 
and all these current accounts are linked to a centralized account are linked to a centralized account. So, what is the advantage? Let us say I go to an ATM of ICICI, right? But I am having an account in IOB. So, naturally, I want to draw money from IOB, but I am having only ICICI ATM. So, even via ICICI ATM, I can draw money from my account because this, everything is integrated. Let us say this is me, this is Guna. Right? I want to get the money from my account, but I am going to ICIC ATM. So, via, let us say this is not Guna, I am sorry, this is Guna. Right? So, I want to collect money, but I am finding ICIC ATM here. So, I go to ICIC ATM, right? But since everything is interconnected, I can come and take money from my account via this ICIC ATM. So, all the bank accounts are interconnected, all the ATMs are interconnected. This is the core banking solutions given by RBI and this is called as e -Cober. right. Thirteenth question, so fourteenth, I mean fourth industrial revolution. So, what is this fourth industrial revolution? So, first industrial revolution uh, in 18th century, it was characterized by water and steam. Water and steam, it was able to help uh, uh, people uh, saving large amount of uh, time and energy. And 19th century, we came with the second industrial revolution that is characterized by electricity, power, right? And the mid of 20th century, we came with the third industrial revolution that is characterized by the computers, information technology, IT enabled services, right? So, now, now we are finding the uh, fourth industrial revolution that is characterized by the IoT, Internet of Things, Virtual Reality, Artificial Intelligence. Second statement is correct. Whether first statement is correct? Definitely not. It may appear that this is also the fourth revolution is something like a continuation of digital revolution which we are saying it is third revolution. It may appear but we have characterized the digital revolution as third revolution and the uh, fourth revolution will be IOT, virtual reality, artificial intelligence part. So, I am differentiating because of the disruptiveness of the technology and also the the magnitude which we are seeing in the development in the recent uh, technologies. So, this is given us uh, a different uh, uh, designation as fourth industrial revolution. Statement 1 is wrong. Statement 2 is correct. So, answer is B2 only, right? Fourteenth question, which of the following pairs are correctly matched, right? Corporate 18 here, corporate 18, COR means coordinated, PAT means patrol, coordinated patrol, India and in Indonesia, they are joining hands to, it is a biannual exercise basically, right? So, they will coordinate in patrolling the borders of India and Indonesia. GMX 18, J for Japan, I for India, Japan, India, maritime exercise 18. So, that is also correct, right? It is the maritime exercise between Japan and India. Malabar 18, it is the maritime access between India, USA and Japan, not Australia. So, third part is not correctly matched. Youth Abhyas, it is a military access between India and USA, not France. So, 3 and 4 is wrongly matched, 1 and 2 is correctly matched. Answer is B, 1 and 2 only. 15th question. So, consider the following statements regarding National Air Quality Index. It is a number given by the government to indicate the level of pollution in the air to the public, right? So, they are uh, having some six, uh, um, para, I mean, some six uh, categories are there ranging from good to severe and eight pollutants are uh, measured in the air, right? So, ozone is actually measured, ozone is not measured is a wrong statement. The pollution status of only capital cities know they are releasing for almost 200 plus cities. That is also wrong. The formulation of AQI was a continuation of the initiatives under the such Bharat Mission. That is a true statement because the AQI was launched during the 2014 October. It is a continuation of such Bharat Mission. That is a true statement. So, here 1 and 2 is wrong. The question is about correct statement. So, answer is C3 only. 16th question. So, this is with respect to International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property. So, understand this question. First, we will try to understand what is World Heritage Site. World Heritage Sites. So, certain sites, certain uh, locations are culturally, scientifically very important. Historically, it is very important that has to be protected. 
that is having international significance right and those sites will be selected by UNESCO right. So, on what basis they choose that particular site that is defined in something called as World Heritage Convention right. So, this convention is helped by three different bodies one is ICROM, one is ICROM and another one is ICOMS and another one is IUCN right another one is IUCN. So, these ICROM and ICOMOS, so ICOMOS is with respect to monuments and sites and ICROM is with respect to preservation and restoration of cultural property and these two organization they help uh, they advise on identifying the cultural heritage sites right that is correct and IUCN that is advises on natural heritage sites. So, statement 2 is correct. Statement 1 ICROM is one of three advisory bodies named in the World Heritage Convention, the other two are that is also correct. Third statement ICROM is a non-governmental organization, no that is wrong, it is a intergovernmental organization which works for the cause of improving conservation management etc. So, third statement is wrong, 1 and 2 is correct, so answer is B 1 and 2 only. Right. Next one, 17th questions with response to Saubhagya scheme, Pradhan Mandri, Sanj Pichli, Hargad Yojana. So, what is Saubhagya scheme? Providing last mile power connectivity to all willing households in both urban and rural areas that is called as Saubhagya, that is the objective of Saubhagya, right. So, the people falling under below poverty line category selected based on socio-economic caste census for whom the connection will be given at free of cost. For the non-beneficiaries, the connection will be given at a price of 500 rupees. They can pay it in 10 installments by paying 500 rupees. Even the non-beneficiaries, they can avail this particular benefit. Nodal ministry is Ministry of Power. So, it is a flagship scheme of Ministry of Power. That is a true statement. Under Saubhagya, free electricity connections provide to all households. That is also correct. But uh, it is not given at free electricity. I mean, uh, it is not given for free for all because as I said only for the uh, below poverty line category people it is given for free for others they have to pay uh, 500 rupees of uh, connection cost. The beneficiaries for free electricity connections will be identified using socio-economic cash census that is correct. Second statement is actually wrong so 1 and 3 is correct so answer is C 1 and 3 only. So, 18th question this is about uh, Bharat Net project. So, this project is aiming to give affordable broadband connectivity uh, of 2 Mbps to 20 Mbps to all households, but not for free of cost, only on demand basis, right. It is priced, it will not be given free of cost, first statement is wrong. The entire project is funded by the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology. This is also wrong. The project is funded by Universal Service Obligation Fund. Universal Service Obligation Fund. What is that fund? Telecom operators, when they pay fee to get the license, a portion of that fee will be sent to this particular fund. And that fund will be used for funding this project. Statement 2 is wrong. It will help to transform India. Obviously, it is going to help transform India into a digitally empowered society. So, statement 3 is correct. Statement 1 is wrong, statement 2 is wrong, so answer is C3 only. Nineteenth question, so which of the following places has the union government opened strategic petroleum reserves? See, we all know that we are importing almost 1, 10 lakh crores, uh, I am sorry, yes, 10 lakh crores worth of oil. So, India is the third largest uh, uh, consumer of oil next to USA and China, right. So, we need to have some buffer stocks to prevent ourselves from externalities. So, we are creating buffer stocks, right, underground reserves, we are um, holding large amount of petroleum reserves in the underground. So, Union Government, they have that reserve is called a strategic petroleum reserve. So, Union Government recently they opened the reserve in Vishakapatnam, Padur and Mangalore in phase 1. So, phase 1 is opened. And phase 2 is going on. So, the phase 2 is being constructed uh, in uh, the Padur region and Chandikol region that is phase 2. But that is just now we have launched that 
yet to be constructed but the question is about uh, which was opened recently so that is in Vishakhapatnam, Padur and Mangalore answer is C. 20th question is with respect to uh, wholesale price index WPI contains commodities under the categories of that is a true statement there are three categories almost there are 697 articles under three headings. So, here the highest weightage is given to manufacturing products highest weightage is given to manufacturing products right. So, primary articles has the highest weightage that is the wrong statement. So, here answer is A1 only. 21st question with respect with reference to Chandra telescope consider the following statements Chandra telescope Chandra's telescope is a telescope located in the space to study the X-ray emissions to study the X-ray emissions coming from very hot extraterrestrial regions like exploded stars outer region of the uh, uh, black holes right. So, Telescope was specially designed to detect the X-ray emission that is correct statement, but it is designed by NASA and not ISRO right. So, here answer first statement is wrong, second one is correct, I have asked to choose about correct answer. So, answer is B2 only. 20. Right, with reference to Krishi Vikas Yojana, this Yojana aims to promote organic farming, why? Because of chemical farming, we are losing the soil fertility, chemical farming, in chemical farming we use large amount of fertilizers, pesticides, right, we apply large amount of water, when there is evaporation that increases the, uh, that leaves the mineral part in the soil, that increases the salinity, soil fertility being uh, losing, right. So, this scheme actually aims to promote the organic production that is correct, but not subsistence organic production, it aims to promote commercial organic promote production. So, first statement is wrong. Meghalaya is the first state, no Sikkim is the first state being declared as fully organic, second is also wrong. So, answer is, I have asked about correct statements, both are wrong, answer is D, neither one nor two. <coughs> 23rd question, this is about uh, BP Colombo spacecraft that was sent to study the Mercury, that was sent to study the Mercury. It is a joint mission of European Space Agency and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency to study the planet Mercury. So, 23rd question, answer is B, Bombay, 23rd is B. 24th question. Which of the following best describes the word Pyong 98? So, it is the largest unmanned drone built by China. It can uh, hold a payload of close to 1.5 tons. That is the capacity of this particular China by far. It is the largest unmanned drone built by China. Answer is option D, right? 25th question. Cannot price is recognizes distinguished contributions to energy policies through scholarship or practice and is intended to honor those leading revolutions in energy policy. It is a correct statement. Cannot price. It is named after the famous French physicist N. S. Cannot, right? It is given to people who are bringing uh, um, changes in energy policies, right? So, recently India and not France. India was awarded, our uh, union minister Piyush Goyal was awarded this particular award for his sustainable solutions in energy. So, India and France have jointly been awarded this wrong statement. See, Champions of Earth award was given to both our uh, honorable prime minister as well as the French president. But this is particularly given only for India, Mr. Piyush Goyal received this particular award. It is not jointly awarded. Second statement is wrong. First one is correct. So, answer is A, one only. Which of the following are correct with regard to Digi Yatra initiatives? So, when I go to airport, they are verifying two things. First, they verify my ID and they verify my ticket, right? I want to have a paperless travel. I do not want to carry my ticket. So, if you are interested in that, government is given, uh, has come up with an initiative called Digi Yatra initiative, right. Go to the Digi Yatra website, 
right show your interest towards this particular initiative your face will be scanned and you will be given a unique number and whenever you uh, apply whenever you go for uh, uh, purchasing a ticket right you have to give this number and next time when you go to the uh, airport you need not uh, uh, show you your ticket just give your face recognition that is sufficient that is initiative of Digi Yatra. So, this platform aims to offer paperless and hassle free air travel. So, answer is C. 26 answer is C. Alright. 27. The lake is located in the world's only high velocity impact crater formed in basaltic rock. Yes, it is Lonar Lake in Maharashtra. It was created after a meteor impact, which was happened, which was created after a meteor impact. In some previous question, I was explaining about this Lonar Lake, right? I hope you remember this Geoparks, Global Geoparks, where Geological Survey of India, they are also recommending this Lonar Lake to be considered as one of the Geoparks site, right? So, your answer is B, Bombay. 28th question. So, here I have asked to choose the not correct statements. We will see. So, here Pobitora. Mm, Brahmaputra flows through Pabitara, no doubt. Bitarkanika, okay, river Brahmani flows through Bitarkanika, no doubt. But Jim Corbett, it is not Yamuna, it is Ram Ganga. It is Ram Ganga which flows through Jim Corbett. Second uh, is not correctly matched. So, here option is A, 2 only because here the second part is not correctly matched, right. Twenty-ninth question. Twenty-ninth question. So consider the following statements regarding the water verifiable paper audit trail (VV PAT). See, you all have heard about the EVM tampering issue. So there were large amount of speculation to, in order to bring more credibility to the election process. Election Commission they have uh, come up with this water verifiable paper audit trail. So accordingly, so when I go and uh, cast my vote, uh, the moment after casting the vote. In a glass box, a paper slip will be printed in which the serial number of the candidate whom I have voted, serial number, his name, his party symbol, everything will be printed. That printed slip will be visible for 7 seconds. I can see, I can verify whether I have, you know, casted my vote for the actual person to whom I have intended for. After 7 seconds, that printed slip will be cut and it will be dropped in a box. You cannot take it, right? So, this VVPAT was introduced in all assembly constituencies for the first time, not in Gujarat, in Goa. In 2017, Goa, it was introduced. When voting is done through EVM, a paper slip is printed, of course, yes, which can be collected. No, it cannot be collected. So, both the statements are wrong. So, answer is D, neither one, nor two. 30th question. The APSPA was introduced by the British as an ordinance to tackle the Quit India movement. Of course, yes. So, during Quit India movement, the British they were not able to control the masses. So, they brought an ordinance, something called as APSPA, Armed for Special Powers Act, even after independence. We are continuing this APSPA um, Act, right? So, who can impose APS APSPA? Central government, governor in the state the administrator of the union territory, these people, they can implement, they can bring APSPA in their state. First, they have to designate a particular area as disturbed area, right? And that disturbed area should be officially notified in the gazette. After that, the APSPA Act will come in that particular area. So, this APSPA Act gives large amount of power to the armed forces. The armed forces can arrest anybody without warrant. They can go for searching places without again a warrant, right? They can even open firing after some proper warning, right? So, these are about APSPA. Declaration of an area as disturbed under the Act should be reviewed every six months. Is correct? Central government, governor of state, administrative UT can declare the whole part of the state or UT as a disturbed area if they want whole or a part. Recently whole part of Assam has been uh, brought under AFSPA for 6 months because there is an uh, issue in uh, revising the NRC, National Register for Citizens in Assam, you all know about that, right? 
So, all the three statements are correct. So, answer is D 1, 2 and 3. 31st question is with regard to Bureau of Energy Efficiency. So, BEE aims to this comes under Ministry of Power in 2002 they brought this uh, initiative. Um, it aims at increasing the energy intensity definitely no energy intensity means you know increasing energy intensity means there will be more consumption of energy. No, this initiative is to reduce the consumption of energy. We all have seen in uh, the electrical appliances there will be star rating in our gases, air conditions, right? We will be seeing it, right? The intention of the more the star rating, that means that particular product can save more amount of energy. It is not about increasing, it is about decreasing. First question is wrong. BEE labeling is mandatory for air conditioner, frost creature state. That is a correct statement. Second statement is correct. So, answer is. Uh, 1 is wrong, 2 is correct, about correct statement, so answer is B, 2 only. Thirty-second question is regarding uh, Poshan Abhyan. Poshan Abhyan is nothing but the National uh, Nutrition Mission. It is a multi-ministerial convergence mission with the vision to ensure attainment of all nutrition free India by 2022. That is a true statement. So, Union Government has signed loan agreement with World Bank that is also correct. World Bank has agreed to give 200 million dollars to achieve this nutritional mission. See because see we also have the sustainable development goals target by 2030 we have to achieve uh, goal number 3 that talks about uh, health right and there are different indicators which also talks about nutrition status. So, World Bank has given a loan agreement of 200 million dollars. So, 1 is correct, 2 is correct. So, answer is See both 1 and 2. See both 1 and 2. Right. Asian premium is sometimes seen in news. So, what is this Asian premium? The OPEC countries, the oil, petroleum, the organization of petroleum exporting uh, countries, these OPEC countries, they used to sell the petrol, the oil, right, at a different price for different countries. Then OPEC countries in Saudi Arabia sells to America, they sell at a different price earlier before 1980s I am saying. When they sell it to UK, they sell it at a different price, right. But after 1980, Saudi Arabia, I mean Saudi Arabia particularly, they came with something called as marker system. They came with something called as marker system. That means whenever they sell the oil to a particular region, they will sell the oil price in relation to the price of oil in that particular region. See, America also produces oil. So, what is the cost per barrel in America, right? That will be chosen as the reference price and Saudi Arabia will be comparing the reference, based on the reference price, Saudi Arabia was selling the oil. So, it was doing for most of the countries. OPEC was also following it, right? But when it comes to Asian countries, right? When it comes to Asian countries, they were not having proper uh, oil producing uh, units. So, from when we have some oil, it is assumed that India is producing oil, Reliance is producing oil. Then OPEC countries will compare the oil price of Reliance and they will fix a price. But in uh, Asia, there was no big oil producing uh, companies. So, they were not able to have a proper reference price point number one. Point number two, the derivatives market earlier in 1980s were not available in Asia. Derivatives market is the market through where I will be uh, trading commodities, I will be trading oil. You would have heard about the futures market could have heard about uh, uh, options market, right? So, this is about uh, market system. So, in market system, as I said, Saudi Arabia or OPEC countries, they were not able to, they were not able to find a proper reference price in uh, Asian countries and there was no proper derivative markets. So, because of uh, these two reasons, they were selling the oil at a very relatively higher price. For USA, they were selling it for, let us assume that they were selling it for uh, 10 dollars per barrel, uh, uh, for India they were selling it for uh, 12 or 13 dollars per barrel. So, there was an extra, there extra price charged by the OPEC countries that is called as Asian premium. So, what is the answer? It is the extra charge being collected by OPEC countries from Asian countries when selling oil. So, answer is B Bombay. 34th question. So, India hosted the World Environment Day 2008 in collaboration with the UN Environmental Program. That is a correct statement. June 5th is called as World Environmental Day. So, India hosted where India said that it is going to ban the single time use plastics by 2022. By 2022, they are going to ban 
the single India is going to ban single use plastics both statements are correct question is about not correct statements so both are correct so answer is D neither one nor two right 35th question is about Pradhan Mantri Bharadiya Jan Ashwadi Yojana Pradhan Mantri Bharadiya Jan Ashwadi Yojana so this Yojana is actually aiming to uh, ensure quality medicines to all people see they are talking about something called generic medicines so what is generic medicines see we have branded medicines certain medicines they carry a brand and that brand would have patented that particular formula for some years so after that some years let us say 20 years that formula becomes open to all right so anybody can produce medicine or based on that formula and that medicine is called as generic medicine in quality wise the branded drug and generic drug will be uh, equal so to promote this generic drugs because people are not aware about generic drugs so they are purchasing costly drugs right certain cancer life saving drugs are sold for 1 lakh rupees plus right the same generic equivalent is sold for 8000 rupees plus people are not aware so because of which they are not able to purchase generic medicines so the aim of this uh, particular yojana is to ensure access quality medicines create awareness about generic medicines right and also to generate employment by engaging individual entrepreneurs government is asking individual entrepreneurs come come and set up jan ashwadi medical shops they are ready to give financial assistance come and stop start this generic medical shops right so generate employment uh, opportunities that's also correct so answer is uh, about we have to choose correct answers right so answer is d 1 2 and 3 36th question what can be the advantages of using ethanol blending with petrol ethanol blending so what is ethanol blending ethanol is a byproduct of molasses which is a byproduct of sugar cane which is a byproduct of sugar cane right we know that we are importing close to 10 lakh crores worth of oil 80 percent of our oil needs we are depending on uh, outside the world right so it's it's completely import based so large amount of uh, Mm, uh, current account deficit uh, balance of payment crisis can also be uh, resulted when there is uh, more amount of imports right so what is this ethanol blending so this ethanol produced from molasses it is having a proper uh, calorific uh, property like uh, normal oil like petrol so this ethanol can be blended mixed with petrol let us take instead of purchasing 1 litre petrol, I can purchase some 0.9 litres of petrol and uh, some amount of uh, ethanol can be blended so that I can save some of my petrol imports. So government of India, I mean, India, I mean government of India is planning to blend almost 10 percentage of ethanol with the petrol by 2022. So if I are able to, if you are able to uh, effectively blend 10% of ethanol with petrol that means that we need not import 10% of petrol right so 1 lakh 10 lakh crores worth of oil we are importing if we are able to save 10 percentage of uh, the petrol the oil then we can save close to 1 lakh crores so the reduction in petrol imports is one thing income boost to farmers so the sugar cane can be sold to sugar mills and the waste the husks of sugar cane can be used to produce molasses so farmers can convert this molasses into uh, the ethanol and they can sell to the oil refineries and again farmers can get more income minimize global warming when you compare crude oil when you compare petrol with ethanol ethanol is a cleaner gas relatively cleaner gas the carbon emissions will be very low so it minimizes global warming so all are correct so answer is d 1 2 and 3 37th question GST benefits the state or union territory where the consumption takes place GST is a destination based tax it is a destination based tax let us take <coughs> a person from Chennai let us say Guna myself Guna he is purchasing I am purchasing something from uh, Bangalore something from Bangalore right so what happens the goods comes to Tamil Nadu goods comes to Chennai and the money goes to Bangalore 
so the goods are consumed in chennai so the tax revenue in this particular sale the gst revenue in this particular sale according to gst definition that tax revenue will go to the states where the product is consumed here guna is consuming the product of course guna is purchased from bangalore that is different case but that good is being finally consumed in chennai so the tax revenue in that sale will go to will go to tamil nadu government so gst benefit state or ut where the consumption takes place is the correct statement Mm, the center shall have two thirds of the vote. No, definitely no. In the GST council, we will have state representatives, central representatives, and union territory representatives. These three people, they sit together, they take any decision on GST. Right? Everybody is given some voting weightage, where the central government is given a voting weightage of one third, and the remaining states are given voting weightage of Two third, right? So here the statement is wrong because it says center has two thirds of the votes, but actually it is center has only one third of the votes, and the states others are having the two third of the votes. Statement two is wrong, right? So answer is uh, A one only, right? So why there is a differential voting? Because unilaterally central government and state government should not be in a position to take a decision. To take a decision, we need three fourth majority. We need three fourth majority. So the voting weightage is given in such a way that both the players uh, unilaterally cannot take any decisions. Answer is A one only. Right. This question is about uh, daily disability adjusted life years daily. So what does this mean? Let us say a healthy person can live hundred years, but he is drinking, smoking. Because of all these activities, uh, his life expectancy is, uh, let us say, 70 years. So, he is losing 30 healthy years, that the healthy years lost, that is called as daily, not just healthy years lost. Let us say, by 60, because of smoking, he is having some uh, uh, throat cancer. Let us say, he is having some throat cancer. Let us say, he is having some throat cancer. So, what happens because of throat cancer? He may be, uh, he may be, he may become disabled, or he, he may not be having a normal life. So because of uh, these reasons, because of these reasons, he will be disabled for let us say ten years. So I'll just uh, repeat this daily once again. So daily, as I said, the number of healthy years lost. Let us say that a person can live hundred years, right? Let's assume that a person can live hundred years. Let us say uh, because of uh, some bad habits like smoking, drinking, he is losing his life by uh, 70 years. Let us say in the 60th year, uh, he is becoming disabled because of these activities, right. So in this case, I will say daily as the number of healthy years lost that not just about these 30 years, but also takes into account of the disabled 10 years. So I add these two, the 40 years is the disability adjusted life year. The sum of years of potential life loss due to premature mortality and also years of productive life loss to disability, right. Tracking disability adjusted life years index is a key target of national health policy is a correct statement. So both are correct answer is C, both 1 and 2. 39th question is regarding uh, OECD. Right, Organization for Economic Cooperation Development is an uh, intergovernmental uh, economic organization. So, I will just mark these two statements. OECD is an intergovernmental, or intergovernmental economic organization to promote the policies that will improve the economic and social well being of people around the world. That is a correct statement. That is the exact definition of OECD. Whether India is a member of OECD? No, India is not a member of OECD. India is not a member of OECD. So there are uh, 36 countries as members, it was formed in 1961 basically to stimulate the economic progress as well as the world trade. Second statement is wrong, first one is correct, so answer is A one only, answer is A one only. 40th question, Nilgiri Thar endemic to Nilgiri Hills have been consistently decreasing in numbers. So in this Nilgiri Thar, so these Nilgiri Thar. Uh, you will find the high altitudes of western guards, right? 
in especially in Tamil Nadu and also some parts of Kerala. So what happened recently there is a fall in the consistent fall in the population of the Nilgiri Thar. IECN is also classifying that under endangered list right. So what are the reasons all three are reasons all three are reasons answer is D 1, 2 and 3 right. 41st question is about uh, pad abort test. So pad abort test conducted recently is critical for human uh, space mission of course yes pad abort test is very very critical for human space mission right. So what is pad abort test? So this pad abort test is something uh, related to uh, crew escape mechanism. So some uh, uh, manned mission uh, is being sent a manned space mission is being spent there is some problem with spacecraft the crew has to escape for which we need to have a proper pad abort we need to have a proper pad abort system so pad abort test was conducted recently in india yes right it is uh, not conducted by uh, drdo it was conducted by isro statement one is false india at present does not have human space flight program that is a true statement currently Russia, USA, China, they are having this uh, space human space flight program. Now we are planning to send a human space uh, program uh, that is named as Gaganyaan. So for which this pad abort test is very crucial. ISRO has recently conducted, it was successful. So one is wrong, two is correct, answer is B, two only. Answer is B, two only. 42nd question with respect to island development agency, see India is having almost uh, 1300 plus islands, we are not uh, making use of the potential of island, we have a high scope for tourism, strategically important which is spread in several parts of Indian Ocean. So our Prime Minister he launched this uh, Indian development agency in 2017. So what was the intention of this uh, IDEA? The intention is to have a holistic development of islands. So the meetings are chaired by not Prime Minister, rather Home Minister. Statement 2 is wrong, first one is correct, answer is A, one only. Right. Next question, State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World Report. State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World Report, it is an annual flagship report prepared not by IFPRI, it is prepared by WHO, it is prepared by UNICEF. Right? It is prepared by FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, many agencies they come together and they prepare this report, this report is, first statement is wrong, right? This report talks about the ending hunger, achieving food security, improving nutrition, right? And analyzing the challenges for achieving the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, statement 2 is absolutely correct. Statement 1 is false, so here answer is, 43rd question answer is B, 2 only. What if the question regarding strategic trade authorization one, what is the strategic trade authorization one? See America is having a good amount of dual use technology, America is having good amount of dual use technology, right? Dual use technology example, we can say nuclear, nuclear energy that can be used for generating nuclear power and also that can be used for uh, manufacturing nuclear weapons. So dual use purpose we can use, so America is having large amount of nuclear, I mean uh, dual use technology. Those technologies are not uh, easily given to other countries. So the countries will be listed, technologies will be listed and what are those countries can access those technologies that will also be listed. Strategic trade authorization one list that means it is a list of technologies and there will be list of countries who can access these technologies, right. So recently India was included under that strategic trade authorization list, only 34 or 36 countries were there in the list and now India is entering that list, right. Remember Israel is not in that list, many NATO forces are not in that list, but India is entering that list that means we can purchase, we can purchase those uh, technologies. So earlier if India wants to purchase any of the dualist technology then India has to go and get a license for that, but now the license there is no such license required, we are exempted from getting a license, since we got into that list, we can purchase those technologies. The status 
will allow a country to buy highly advanced and cutting edge sensitive technology from major defense partners of the world. No, only US. India is the only South Asian country. Of course, yes, India is the only South Asian country to be on the list. Statement 2 is correct. One is wrong. So, answer is B2 only. Answer is B2 only. 46th question, which of the following are the applications of nanoparticle? Nanoparticles are often it's coming in news, very important. Last year they asked about 3D technology, this time we can ask about nanoparticles. All are applications, all are applications, right? Nanoparticles are used uh, in delivery of uh, uh, cancer drugs. Nanoparticles are used uh, uh, in um, uh, solving the uh, uh, liquid uh, contaminants, waste management, right? All four are the applications of nanoparticles, very important, not just for prelims, also keep it for mains, right? Look into the various applications of nanoparticles, make a list. Here all the four are correct, answer is D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. 47th question, Lakwar multipurpose project is being constructed on which of the following rivers? It is constructed on the Yamuna, it is a stalled project from six states right above the Yamuna river, uh, let us Uttar Pradesh. Uh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, uh, Haryana, Rajasthan, Delhi, right? Thirsty states, they want large amount of water. A dam is being constructed in Uttarakhand, right? And that project is called as Lakpar Multipurpose Project. Uh, answer is Yamuna. 48th question, 48th question. This is about the Human Rights Council, Human Rights Council. It's an intergovernmental body, of course, yes, responsible for strengthening promotion of protection of human rights, of course, yes, around the globe for addressing uh, situations of human rights violations within the United Nations, of course, within UN, that is also correct. Second one is correct. The council consists of all the members, no, from 47 members from the UN General Assembly will be chosen. So, UN General Assembly, they will be choosing 47 members. So, India was also recently chose, I mean, it, it entered the uh, human Rights Council list, right? So the council assists, consists of not all the members, only 47 members. India was elected recently, that is a true statement, but not for the first time, for the third time we are being selected. So, third statement is wrong, second statement is also wrong, first one is correct, so answer is A, one only. 49th question regarding algal bloom, what is this algal bloom? You would have seen in our uh, lakes, ponds, there will be some green mat like structure which is being formed above the ponds, above the lakes, right? The these are called as uh, mat forming algae, right? These algae, right? And because of, uh, maybe because of increase in nutrients, and this water, what happens? The industrial discharge is being sent to the lakes those are becoming nutrients for the algae and they thrive, they form a mat over the lake and that inhibits the penetration of sunlight, right? And that is greatly affecting uh, the entry of sunlight. Sunlight is the primary source of energy, so aquatic plants, fishes are being killed, the ecosystem is being damaged, right? And this algal bloom will definitely not because of lack of nutrients, because of increased nutrients, J3 is wrong. When the 3 is wrong, the options between A and B, right? Of course, presence of cyanobacteria, that is true. This presence of cyanobacteria that is also resulting in algal bloom. So, 2 is correct. Rising temperature is also one of the reason. So, answer is B, 1 and 2. B, 1 and 2. 50th question, this is regarding RUSA, Rashtriya Uchita Shiksha Abhiyan. See, India is having around 800 universities. India is having around 800 universities. In this 800 universities, almost 369 universities are state universities. There are close to 150 centrally funded institutes. Almost 96 percentage of students are studying in these uh, uh, government universities, state and universities, and other universities, this 800 category. Only 6 percentage of students are studying in this 150 centrally funded units, right? So, what happens? large almost all the amount of money allocated and for the HRD under education is being hijacked by these 150 centrally funded institutes. So, other universities they are not able to get funds. So, um, this RUSA was launched, this RUSA was launched, it is a conditional funding scheme. So, central government uh, ministry of HRD says that state universities 
I will give you some uh, conditions and if you are able to do that reforms on a conditional basis when you do the reform let's say for example you have to improve the uh, student teacher uh, ratio increase the uh, number of uh, teachers uh, merit based appointment of vice chancellors so they are giving some conditions if the universities they are adhering to those conditions then those universities will be given some funding right it's a conditional funding scheme so the first one is about motivate engage children age group that is wrong that is wrong to improve the quality of higher education in the country through international that is also wrong to improve the overall quality of state institutions of course by ensuring conformity to prescribed norms of course and adopt accreditation as a mandatory quality of assurance framework so c is the correct statement d to provide rural india professional resource support that is also wrong so obviously answer is c so for rusa answer is c right 51st question so this is regarding uh, uh, RERA, Real Estate Regulatory Authority Act. This act says that every state government and every union territory they have to have, they have to establish a uh, real estate regulatory authority. So it is compulsory for a state to establish, that is a correct statement. So under this act, registration is mandatory not for all commercial and residential real estate projects. If the project size is more than 500 square meters, or the department is having more than 8 flats then in that case that project has to be registered under RERA. Statement 2 is wrong. The act ensures that <coughs> the reality projects are completed in time. Of course yes if delayed the developer will have to pay the interest on the amount paid by the buyer. Of course uh, statement uh, 3 is correct. So 1 and 3 is correct. So answer is B 1 and 3 only. second question so this is regarding uh, fixed dose combination so what is FDZ, F F FDC fdc it's a combination i have headache i go to doctor doctor prescribes me a medicine that medicine will cure headache assume another person goes for uh, fever and doctor gives a medicine that will cure fever assume a person has both headache and fever in that case, doctor will not give two different medicines, rather they will be giving a fixed dose combination. This FDC is nothing but a combination of two or more medicines, two or more uh, medicines in particularly they will be calling it as APA, two or more active pharmaceutical ingredient. So, it is a cocktail of two or more active drugs packed a single dose, that is a correct statement. They can be used to treat infectious diseases like HIV, malaria. TB that is again a correct statement so here the question is about uh, correct statements so answer is C both 1 and 2. Did that question the term AOLS so what is AOLS so this is a, a wind sensing satellite uh, launched by uh, European Union and uh, European uh, Space Agency so European Space Agency in association with European Union they sent AEOLIS uh, space mission as satellite which aims to uh, observe the wind pattern uh, which will be largely helpful to understand the climate change and also the weather forecast. So a space mission to map the earth winds answer is B, put that question answer is B. 54th question, so this is with respect to catastrophe bonds, with respect to catastrophe bonds, so what is catastrophe bonds? This bond was introduced in 1990 in USA. There was a hurricane called as Andrew, and that was creating a large amount of destruction in America. So, where they introduced this catastrophic bond. So, what is catastrophic bonds? In what way this cat bonds, it is also called as cat bonds. In what way these cat bonds are different from usual bonds? See, we will just have a comparison a normal bond as well as a cat bond. The main difference between the normal bond and CAT bond is in the CAT bond the interest rates will be relatively very very high right. The same time there will be a time period of course like a normal bond it may have 10 years of time period like that a CAT bond can also have a 10 years of time period. So after 10 years the money will be given along with a large amount of interest but in this 10 years time if there is some uh, catastrophic event in that case in that case 
some amount of this cat bond let us say this cat bond is worth 100 crores and there is going to be a interest of 20 percentage it means after 10 years i will be getting the 100 crores along with 20 percent interest for all the years right but imagine in the 10 years if there is some uh, uh, event like uh, kerala floods or the gaja cyclone if that is going to cause huge amount of destruction in that case some of this 100 crores can be diverted right so this cat wants will have more interest at the same time there is also a large amount of risk involved so it's a debt instrument issued by public sector banks no it is wrong it was used recently in the wake of punjab national bank scam no completely wrong completely not associated with the definition of catastrophic bonds i have asked about correct statements both are wrong so answer is d neither one nor two 54 d neither one nor two Fifty fifth question. This is regarding Aishman Bharat Health Protection Scheme, which was recently launched in the month of uh, September. So, Aishman Bharat, this scheme aims to give uh, five, I mean, ten lakh, I mean, five lakh rupees of uh, uh, insurance, health insurance for each household. I mean, the beneficiary households. Almost ten crore people will be benefiting because of this particular Aishman Bharat uh, Protection Scheme, right? So, this Aishman Bharat has uh, two uh, different divisions. So, one is about the health and wellness center and another is about the national health protection mission, right. So, this aims to provide health care facilities to poor uh, over 10 crore families, both urban and rural. That is a correct statement. Aishman Bharat national health protection scheme will have defined benefit cover of 5 lakh rupees per family for secondary and tertiary that is also correct per household they are giving a 5 lakh rupees of annual insurance cover services under the scheme can be availed at all public that is correct and not all private places only the um, enrolled private hospitals only in those private hospitals you can avail this benefit so statement 3 is wrong so answer is b 1 and 2 only With reference to Kisan credit card, so Kisan credit card, this is again a no, it's like a normal credit card, like how we have credit card, there will be an upper limit. Let us say I also have a credit card, the upper limit is 2 lakh rupees, I can swipe up to 2 lakh rupees, right, like that. These credit card, they are given to farmers particularly, right, and these are helping them to meet their short term credit needs, that is a true statement, right. And this KC scheme provides facility to upgrade through rupee card that is also a correct statement right and remember this KCC this Kisan credit card can be used uh, in the ATMs for drawing money also there is a special provision for that right in the recent 18-19 uh, budget the government also extended this Kisan credit card availability to the fishermen as well as people engaged in uh, agri allied activities here the question is about both statements are correct question is about not correct so answer is b neither one nor two with reference to national policy on biofuels consider the following statements right we will see the policy expands the scope of raw material for ethanol production by allowing the use of sugarcane juice and other sugar containing materials yes so the biofuels like ethanol which are derived from sugarcane juice right from sugarcane particularly but the recent policy government they said that ethanol can be produced from other sugar containing materials also and also from broken rice and also from wheat but government clearly said that only the surplus production uh, um, grains the surplusly produced grains only that should be diverted for producing this biofuels it categorizes all biofuels under single category no it is categorizing into basic advanced third generation biofuels statement 2 is wrong so 57th question answer is about correct statements only first statement is correct answer is a one only 58th question is about uh, cara central adoption resource authority cara so cara is an uh, statutory body uh, which comes under uh, Ministry of Women and uh, Child Welfare, mm, which is an autonomous body, which takes into account of uh, in-country in and uh, 
inter country uh, adoption regulations so cara is mandated to monitor the in country as well as inter country adoption that is a true statement cara permits single men and women to adopt a child of any gender that's a wrong statement because a single man can adopt only a male child uh, single women can adopt a uh, child of any gender so second is wrong third one individuals living in a uh, living in relationship will not be able to adopt children from within india so this was the condition earlier recently cara they have revised the circular and they said that on a case to by case basis even the living in relationship uh, individuals will also be given a chance to adopt the children in india so third statement is actually uh, wrong so the answer is a one only Fifty ninth question. This is regarding uh, Pradhan Mandri Fasal Bima Yojana. It's the crop insurance scheme launched in two thousand sixteen, right? So PMFBY is compulsory for loanee farmers. Yes, the farmers who have, have availed this loan, they have to get this crop insurance. That is important. That is very important condition. There is a correct statement. The scheme covers risks such as nuclear risk, crop. grazed or destroyed by domestic or wild animals no definitely no this is not nuclear risks or crop grazed or destroyed by domestic or wild animals is not a risk which is being covered under this pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana so this pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana that even covers the post harvest risk but not the risk like nuclear risk or crops grazed risks right so second b is wrong there will be no cap on the premium and reduction of the sum insured that is a correct statement so for kharif crops the premium to be paid is uh, 2 percentage the rabi crops the premium to be paid is 1.5 percentage for horticultural crops the premium to be paid is 5 percentage so the remaining premium amount right that will be paid by the government of india and there is no cap on the premium and reduction of sum insured so a is correct c is correct but the and question is about not a feature B is not a feature, so answer for the ninth question is Bombay. B Bombay. Sixtieth question. Which of which of the following activities come under National Mission for uh, Clean Ganga? National Mission for Clean Ganga because of the cultural significance of Ganga, large amount of schemes and funds being uh, spent on conserving the Ganga. So under National Mission, all the activities, all the activities. they are coming under national mission for ganga so answer is d 1 2 3 4 and 5 61st question is regarding aadhar we all know aadhar is a 12 digit random number don't say that you are not aware that this 12 digit random number issued by uidai this is the only program of its kind globally when online id is being provided free of course of course yes free of course so no such uh, program uh, globally so people generally they tend to make a mistake by looking at the term called as only right but sometimes upsc will be giving you trap so be cautious any individual irrespective of age and gender who is resident of india may voluntarily enroll to obtain aadhar number so when there is a term called as any we used to think that whether it is applicable for uh, citizens or even for foreigners aadhar is not a proof for citizenship it can be availed by any resident indian anybody who is sitting in india can avail for aadhar third statement is correct second statement is correct first statement is also correct so answer is d 1 2 and 3 62nd question with reference to financial inclusion index this index was recently launched by finance ministry so this index tries to measure the financial inclusion part of the country so there will be a basket in that basket all the financial services products will be put into the basket uh, for example uh, um, starting up of an account uh, getting a loan insurance facility all the formal financial products that will be put into this basket and how is the inclusiveness with respect to every product will be measured let us say with respect to starting a bank account how many were able to start a bank account in india 
then with respect to loan facility how many are able to avail loans with the insurance how many are able to avail the insurance like that they will be putting a score and they will be forming an index right so this it will be a measure of access and usage of basket of both formal and informal no it is only formal products not informal it will facilitate researchers study the impact of financial inclusion that is a true statement it enables uh, fulfillment of uh, g20 financial inclusion indicator that's also a correct statement so answer is c2 and 3 only Sixty-third question. This is regarding National Social Assistance Program (NSAP). National Social Assistance Program. So there are five different uh, schemes under this NSAP. One is uh, uh, regarding uh, elderly pension. Another one is pension to widows. Another one is pension given to differently abled people. And another one is uh, one-time sum, uh, one-time uh, money uh, given to the families who have lost uh, their primary breadwinner and another thing is called as Annapurna scheme these are the five uh, schemes which comes under national social assistance program right so it takes care of here given the four options the B option is closer to the NSAP because it takes care of elderly widows and differently abled so this scheme actually tries to give life to um, the DPSP provisions article 41 and article 42 that talks about uh, um, uh, provisions given to the elderly, differently abled uh, widows, uh, uh, maternal benefit, etc. So, these 41 42 can be linked with this NSAP. So, your answer is uh, B Bombay. 64th question Which of the following organization releases the World Economic Outlook? World Economic Outlook is a biannual report released by International Monetary Fund. Answer is C. This report gives you the short term growth projection, medium term growth projection of the country. Right? Uh, they also give growth projections for the next four years. So, India was given a growth projection of close 1.5 percentage in the current uh, financial year and also the next financial year. So, the growth will be almost 7.5 percentage is what uh, IMF is calculating. Let us wait and watch. So, 64 is answer is C. 65th question is regarding non refillment principle. So, what is this non refillment principle? It's a policy that forbids return of asylum seekers, someone who came as a refugee to India seeking asylum, political protection, right? And the country should not force that particular person to go back to the home country, right? And this is mentioned in the uh, uh, UN Convention on Human Refugees in uh, 1951. Remember, India is not a signatory of that Human Rights Convention 1951. We have to keep it in mind, very important. Why it is important sir because see you know the Rohingyas crisis so the Rohingyas in Myanmar they are migrating to India, Bangladesh and other parts of the world right a large amount of Rohingyas have been uh, illegally they migrated to India now recently seven uh, people who were arrested for the illegal migration from uh, Myanmar to India in 2012 they were sent back they were sent back to myanmar very recently right un was saying that you are forcing why are you forcing them to go to myanmar india says that we are not forcing those seven people they were expressing their willingness to go to myanmar that is why we sent them to myanmar at the same time india is not a signatory of the human rights convention 1951 so this non refuelment principle will not apply to india that is what india replied so answer here is C, a policy that forbids return of asylum seekers. <coughs> 66th question. The Sustainable Development 2030 Agenda is adopted by all UN members. So, first of all, what is Sustainable Development uh, Goals? See, in uh, 2015, UN, it came with some 17 goals. And it asked all the UN member countries, maybe developed or developing, it asked all member countries to rearrange or reorient their policy measures in such a way that the 17 goals are being achieved. Under each goal, there will be different different indicators. For example, first goal talks about uh, poverty, second goal talks about hunger, third goal talks about uh, health, fourth goal talks about education, fifth goal talks about uh, gender equality, sixth goal talks about uh, 
um, safe and drinking wa safe water right so it, it goes on all those 17 goals and each goal will be having different different indicators and the um, UN members they have to achieve that particular UN goals in 15 years that is by 2030 they have to achieve that uh, 15 goals right so adopted by all members that's the correct statement sustainable development goals calls for auction by all countries developed and developing both are correct question is about correct statement so answer is C both 1 and 2 so see seventh question so this is again regarding SDG and its target Atal Pension Yojana which are the following different schemes in India are in concurrence to the SDG Atal Pension Yojana Food Security Mission Service Shiksha Beyond Project Tiger all these four answer is D 1 2 3 4 they are in concurrence with the SDG so in India Niti Ayog so Niti Ayog has been uh, chosen to identify the schemes which are in concurrence with the SDG targets and this Niti Ayog and this Niti Ayog they are uh, finding out the schemes and respective ministries and through that ministries they are trying to ensure that we are able to achieve those targets by 2030 right so here the answer is D 1 2 3 and 4 68th question recently there is a large number of deaths of lions in the month of September alone almost 23 lions uh, were uh, dead in the Gir National Park in the last 2-3 years almost uh, uh, 150 plus uh, lions were dead in the Gir National Park in uh, Gujarat right so what could be the possible reason behind this the possible reason is see it's because of a viral attack canine distemper virus canine distemper virus was the main reason along with uh, tick-borne disease along with tick-borne disease Bapsiosis, tick-borne disease caused by Bapsiosis, a particular parasite that and along with that canine distemper virus and this viral attack and that tick-borne disease attack that has killed a large amount of lions. But remember this canine distemper virus that is frequently seen in dogs. In that case how lions can be killed? These lions they are hunting these dogs, they are eating these dogs. When these dogs are coming in contact with this lion in that case the lion can also be infected because of this canine distemper virus we would have seen many videos in recent days the lions they are entering into the neighboring villages and they are uh, there are many cctv footages available on the youtube you can also check out and they are trying to eat those dogs so why are dogs it is entering the lions so answer is option b 69th question with respect to Sustainable development goal, not a sustainable development goal. There are 17 goals, go through the 17 goals. Try to remember those goals. It will be highly useful, not just for prelims, also for your mains. So here, ensuring healthy lives. Yes, of course, yes, that is a part of sustainable development goal. We saw healthy life, all ages, goal number three. And we ending poverty, goal number uh, one itself talks about poverty. All right, and also we have a goal for climate change. Eliminating racism, it is nowhere mentioned in the sustainable development goal. So, here not sustainable development goal, answer is D and Delhi. Which of the following are common characteristics of peninsular rivers? Peninsular rivers, right? These rivers, I, well, let's see what all information I know. Based on that, I will try to answer this. I am very sure that peninsular rivers will not have perennial flow. It will not flow around the year. If it is Himalayan rivers, they flow around the year. There is a good amount of source for uh, water. The glaciers melt, they get large amount of waters. Peninsular rivers, no perennial flow. So, 3 will not come. So, definitely D is not the option. Of course, mature stage. If you take the Himalayan, Himalayan, you know, rivers, when compared to perennial rivers, perennial rivers are mature in stage. So, when there is mature stage, there will be absence of meanders in general. So, 1 and 4 is correct. So, automatically I can go to B. We will also look into the variable course. The basically, peninsular rivers, they are relatively mature and the course will be stable. It will not be variable. Since 1 and 4 is correct, answer is B, 1 and 4 only. 71st question. 71st question. So, here we have to match the river as well as source. Krishna, the source is 
Mahabalishwar. Of course, yes, from Maharashtra. Krishna, the source is Mah Maharashtra. Mahanadi, the source is Dandakarnya. Of course, yes, it is in uh, Chhattisgarh. The source is from Chhattisgarh. Godavari is from Trimbak Plateau. Godavari is from Trimbak Plateau. Again, it is from Maharashtra. Subarnareka, it is from Ranchi Plateau. So, this is from Jharkhand. So, here the third and fourth are interchanged. So, for 1 it is A, for 2 it is B, for 3 it is G. So, 71 it is going to be answer option is B, Bombay. 72nd, it is the largest river system. The state west of Aravalli, it originates near Pushkar. Automatically, we can easily say the answer is Luni. The answer is Luni. From here, the river comes out of Varavali and flows towards the west hill till Telvara and then takes south this direction and join the run of Kutch. Yes, it is Luni. It starts from the Aravalis and it ends in run of Kutch in Gujarat. It starts from Rajasthan, it ends in Gujarat. Right? So, answer is A. Luni. 73rd question Which of the following is our tributaries of Kaveri River? Right. So, Kaveri River, yes, Kabini, Bhavani and Hemavati, these three are the tributaries of Kaveri River, right, Kabini, Bhavani, Hemavati. So, the answer is going to be A, 1, 2 and 5 only, factual questions, right, nothing to explain much, everybody should be knowing, just take your atlas, spend some time and find out the tributaries of Kaveri, also in your explanation sheet, we have also given the other tributaries also, so have a look into that. 74th question. So, regarding rivers of Kerala, they have uh, short courses, they have short courses as Kerala has narrow coastline. Of course, that is a true statement. Pamba river falls into Lake Vembanad after traveling few hundred kilometers from Vidikiris. That is also a correct statement. Periyar river is the largest river based in Kerala. No, Periyar is the second largest. The first biggest or first largest river uh, in Kerala that is going to be Bharat Pula. It is going to be Bharat Pula. So, 3 is wrong. So, answer is going to be B, 1 and 2 only. Answer option is B, 1 and 2 only. 75th question. Arrange the following peninsula rivers from north to south. From north to south. Right. So, we have to arrange from north to south. So, first comes uh, Brahmani. This comes first. So, first comes 2. Then comes Mahanadi, then comes first, then next comes Godavari, that is going to be 4, next comes Krishna, then we get Penneru, that is 5, 2, 1, 4, 3, 5, 2, 1, 4, yes, we have 2, 1, 4, 3, 5, so answer option is C, for 75th question, answer is C, 2, 1, 4, 3, 5. Which of the following rivers drain uh, into the Arabian Sea, which drain into the Arabian Sea? Uh, Subhadnareka, I am very sure it is going into Bay of Bengal, it is flowing into Bay of Bengal. Uh, we will select the correct answer, right? So, 2 will not come, 2 will not come, right? Apart from that, Mondovi, Netravati, Periyar, all other 3 are flowing in Arabian Sea. So, 1, 3, 4, answer option is 76. Answer option is um, there are two similar options. There are two similar options. So we can choose either C or D. Right? Anything the answer will be given. Anything the answer will be given. Right? So answer option is D, but there is a printing error. We regret for that error. Right? So we will give you score even if you put C or D. Right? Seventy seventh question. Seventy seventh question. So, as a multilateral development uh, finance institution, the Asian Development Banks, Asian Development Bank. So, in 1966, this Asian Development Bank was created. Headquarters is in Manila, Philippines. Right? There are close to 67 members. Their main aim to end poverty in the Asia Pacific region. They give loan, they give grants, they also give technical assistance. So, answer is D, 1, 2 and 3. Uh, 
78th question sorry 78th question which among the below institution uh, publishes asian development outlook 78th question which among the below institution publishes asian development outlook so asian development outlook it is an economic uh, forecast it talks about um, developmental issues uh, and the uh, problems in the asia pacific region and also it gives some growth projections in asia pacific region and it is released by asian development bank answer is a 79th question so asian development bank is a financial institution that would be asian in character and provides loan to asian country only no it gives loans to both asia and pacific just now i said india is the largest india is the largest borrower of adp no it is china china is the largest borrower of adp so answer is d neither one nor two 80th question national development bank ndb brics bank is formed based on the lines of world bank definitely no in uh, brics every country is having uh, equal uh, voting rights right but in the world bank that is not the case except brics no other countries allowed to be the member of ndb no the un members states can be a member of uh, ndb ndb gives loans for uh, public projects and private projects ndb gives loans for public projects and private projects so here this is correct they give loan for both the question is about not correct statements so one and two is not correct so answer is b one and two only 80th question answer is b one and two only 81st question aiib asian infrastructure investment bank is a multilateral development bank that aims support the development of infrastructure in asia pacific region that's a correct statement they focus on the infrastructural development india is the largest borrower the true statement and china is the largest shareholder that is again a true statement so all the statements are correct so answer is d 1 2 and 3 8th second question Shanghai Cooperation Organization it is an informal international no it is a formal it is an inter permanent intergovernmental inter uh, organization it is not an informal organization right so India Pakistan Turkmenistan Turkmenistan is not a member of SCO Turkmenistan is not a member of SCO it is Tajikistan that is a member of SCO India and Pakistan they are the members of SCO in 2017 they got admitted into SCO right so above is not correct one and two is not correct so answer is c both one and two are not correct right 83 so regarding seo again all the members shares their border with china no if you look into uzbekistan it is not sharing any members with china so remember seo was initially formed as shanghai five right after the disintegration of the USSR, there was border dispute uh, uh, between China and the newly formed countries and they formed a union called as Shanghai Phi. Then later Uzbekistan entered and they were renaming it as Shanghai Corporation and now we are having eight members along with India and Pakistan. So India, Pakistan, they entered uh, uh, in 2017. So they are not the founding member. So both the statements are wrong. So answer is D neither one nor two 84th question this is regarding rats uh, regional anti-terrorist structure it's a part of seo it is a permanent organ of seo the correct statement it serves to promote cooperation of member states against the three evils of terrorism separatism extremism that is again true it is headquartered not in beijing china only the secretariat of seo is located in beijing china the rats headquarters is in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. So here answer is, well, correct statements, answer is B, 1 and 2 only. 85th question, which of the following are part of Indian Ocean? Part of 85th question, part of Indian Ocean. So apart from this Bosporus Strait, because Bosporus, Bosporus Strait that connects uh, uh, black sea with uh, marmara seas right so bosporus strait is not definitely not a part of indian ocean but others are definitely a part of indian ocean right 
So, 4 is not correct. So, answer is C, 1, 2, 3 and 5 only. Eighty-sixth question regarding Indian Ocean. The Indian Ocean is naturally connected to Mediterranean Sea through Suez Canal. It is not naturally connected, artificially connected. It is artificially connected. All of the Indian Ocean is in the Eastern Hemisphere. That's a true statement. Correct answer is B two only. B two only. First one is wrong. B two only is the correct statement. Eighty-seventh question. Which of the following connects Indian Ocean with South China Sea? It is Strait of Malacca. It is the Strait of Malacca which connects the Indian Ocean with South China Sea. Very important trading route. If that route is choked, then China will find very difficult to trade via Indian Oceans. So, it is somewhere near Singapore, Strait of uh, Malacca, right? Malaysia, Singapore region you can see. Answer is A. 88th question regarding the Indian Ocean topography, right? Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal are the only marginal seas. Who said Andaman Sea? We have Andaman Sea, we have Gulf of Kutch, right? First statement is wrong. Java Trench is the deepest point, that is a correct statement. So, 1 is wrong, 2 is correct, answer is B, 2 only. 89th question, 89th question. So, I have to arrange the islands of Indian Ocean from north to south. Seychelles comes in the north. Next comes the Chagos Archipelago, right? So, 3 comes first, then 1 comes, then comes Mauritius, then comes Mauritius, then comes Reunion Islands, then comes Reunion Islands. So, answer is 3, 1, 4, 2. Uh, answer option is B. The answer option is B. So, these are very static areas, the international organization or the uh, map based questions are very static areas. So, um, whenever you follow, whenever you solve these map based questions, please take your atlas, right? Don't just check whether your uh, uh, answer which you chose is correct or wrong. That is not going to help you in UPSC. You have to take the atlas parallelly. You have to learn the areas, right? Which is only that is going to solve the purpose. Just mere uh, scoring marks in this test. Uh, that is not going to solve the entire purpose. You have to go and revise your atlas and whenever you solve, please have your atlas alongside. 90th question. So, if you are stranded in the middle of Arabian Sea, which is the closest point that can be targeted to reach the among the following options, it is musket. It is musket. That is what is very close to Arabian Sea, right? The middle of Arabian Sea, not Arabian Sea. If I am in the middle of Arabian Sea, assuming, then musket is going to be the closest place, right? With reference to Komkasa, consider the following statements, Komkasa, what is Komkasa? Communication, compatibility, security, agreement is one of the three important foundational agreement, right? That needs to be signed by a country with USA to share high-end encrypted communication satellite. That's a true statement, the true statement. So, Komkasa, we have purchased large amount of aircrafts, military aircrafts, right? Our Indian communication systems are uh, not compatible in the American aircrafts, right? but we are purchasing those American aircrafts, right? So, to get their communication system, we need to sign Comcasa. Yes, in the recent uh, 2 plus 2 talks, the recent 2 plus 2 talks which happened uh, uh, between India and USA. So, Indian uh, Defense Minister and External Affairs Minister and their counterpart, they sat together simultaneously and they were uh, arriving at this Comcasa, India signed Comcasa with USA. So, one statement is correct. Excluding Comcasa, India is signatory to only one of the other two foundational agreements. So, one is Comcasa and another and another agreement is called as LEMOA. LEMOA. So, LEMOA refers to Logistical Exchange Memorandum of Understanding Agreement, which we have signed with Russia. And another agreement is called as BECA. Another agreement is called as BECA, Basic Exchange Cooperation Agreement. So, Basic Exchange Cooperation Agreement, this agreement yet to be signed. We have already signed LEMOA and recently we signed COMCASA. So, excluding COMCASA, India is signatory to only one, of course, only one LEMOA. The other two, I mean, when compared to the other two, BECA and COMCASA. So, both the statements are correct. 
the question is about not correct so answer is d neither one nor two Ninety second question this is regarding uh, Zika virus. Zika virus it is named Zika after a forest in Uganda where there was an outbreak of this virus. So this virus, you know, it, it will have some mild or sometimes no symptoms, and people rarely die of this particular Zika virus. Sometimes Zika are similar to uh, other illness which are spread through mosquito. See, this Aedes aegypti mosquito that is again responsible for uh, spreading this Zika virus. That is, you know, a vector for uh, taking this virus, <coughs> right? So both the statements are actually correct. So answer is C, both one and two. Ninety-third question is regarding ICDS. ICDS scheme aims to develop the child holistically, to have a holistic development of child. Uh, the mother should also be healthy. That is why this scheme, the beneficiaries are children of age group 0 to 6 and also the pregnant women and also the lactating mothers. First statement is correct. It intends to reduce the incidence of mortality, morbidity. Morbidity means a risk factor, right? Mortality, morbidity, malnutrition, school dropouts, right? It intends to reduce, of course, yes, that's a true statement. That's a true statement. It focuses on elementary education. Elementary education is not a part of ICDS. So, 1 and 2 is correct. So, answer for 93 is B, 1 and 2 only. Closing the skills gap, 94th question. Closing the skills gap, a joint initiative. See this closing the skills gap is an initiative of Indian, I mean, World Economic Forum. So in India, in association with the Union Ministry of Skill Development, they want to close the skill gap in India because see, uh, we are going into the fourth industrial revolution. We need to have proper skills to take care of the needs in the fourth industrial revolution for which we need to have, we have to close the skill gap which we are currently having. So, for which the World Economic Forum, they have recently uh, signed an initiative with the Union Ministry of Skill Development in India. Answer is C. 94 answer is C. 95th question. So, this is regarding the new development bank again, BRICS Bank. NDB, each participant country assigned one vote. Of course, yes and no. That's a correct statement. I have already discussed um, when compared to World Bank. Uh, in NDB, everybody will be having equal voting rights. It is the outcome of 7th BRICS. No, it is the outcome of 6th BRICS summit, which held which was held in Fortaleza, Brazil. That is why it is called as Fortaleza Declaration. So, 1 is correct, 2 is wrong. So, answer is A, 1 only. Answer is A, 1 only. 96th question, not an objective of NDB. It is not an objective of NDB. Fostering development of member countries is an objective. Promoting competitiveness and facilitating job creation is an objective. Building a knowledge sharing platform among developing countries that is again an uh, objective. Identifying poor nations and helping them achieve sustainable development that is not an objective. So here answer is about not an objective. So answer is option D. 97th question. The Ramsar Convention, this is regarding conservation of wetlands. Everybody knows Ramsar Convention is an intergovernmental treaty that provides the framework for the conservation of wetlands and their resources. That's a true statement. The wetlands can it also includes all human sites, let's say fish ponds, rice paddies. That is also a part of wetland. Both the statements are correct. Answer is C, both 1 and 2. 98th question, this is regarding PM Asha, Pradhan Mandri Annadatta Ai Sanrakshan Abhyan. So, this PM Asha scheme that aims to uh, realize the full potential of MSP. So, what happens, government, uh, we discussed about MSP in some question also, government, they are uh, coming up with this MSP to help the farmers to realize the prices, right? They are uh, announcing MSP for uh, 24, around 24 notified crops both uh, Rabi and Karif crops, but many farmers are not aware that the MSP is available for these many crops, right? So to ensure the realization of MSP for particularly for oil seeds, pulses and also copra, 
for rice, wheat, everybody knows as MSP. But we also have MSP for other notified crops. But this Pradhan Mandri Anadatta Ai Sandrakshan Yojana or Abhiyan that is focusing on um, uh, pulses, oil seeds as well as copra, right? So there are uh, three, it's an umbrella scheme. It's an umbrella scheme. There are three uh, schemes. One is uh, price support scheme. One we have price support scheme. And another one we have price deficient payment scheme. And another one we have pilot of private procurement and stock list scheme, right? There are three schemes which individually focuses on ensuring uh, MSP for uh, uh, these crops, right? So we look into the options. The scheme is aimed at ensuring the quality meals. No, Anganwadi workers, Asha, no. Both are not correct. Answer is D. Neither one not to. Answer is D. Neither one not to. 99th question recently a tribal language got its own wikipedia edition making it the first in the list given below so it is santali it is 99 it is santali so you will find uh, this language uh, speaking uh, tribes in uh, orissa in west bengal in uh, <coughs> in assam in assam right and also in some parts of uh, jharkhand odisha uh, of course, Odisha, West Bengal, Assam and also Jharkhand. You will find this uh, Santal uh, uh, speaking, uh, Santali speaking tribal groups. So here uh, answer is B, right? So 100th question with reference to the Bird Life International, consider the following statements. See, Bird Life International is a global partnership for conservation of birds, their habitats, global biodiversity, right? And also they work towards sustainable use of natural resources. This is the exact definition, the objective of Bird Life International. It is a not-for-profit organization, right? And they as a network, they try to conserve birds. It supports research on the cause of greenhouse effect, impacts of climate change, global warming on biodiversity. That is again a feature of this Bird Life International, right? Here both the statements are correct, see both 1 and 2. Recently also they declared that in the 21st century, right, they were, uh, they declared that almost 8 different bird species went extinct, 8 different bird species went extinct. That was the uh, recent news which they were highlighting about, right. So for 100th question answer is C. So with this, the uh, test 5 uh, discussion is coming to an end. I hope the discussion was useful. Uh, we will meet in some other video. Thank you.